It's May 27th. A new movie about fighter pilots undergoing training at a naval academy has just been released. An actor named Thomas Maypother Cruz, Tom for short, is witnessing not only his biggest opening weekend ever, but also the highest grossing movie of his career up to this point. The movie is Top Gun, Maverick, and it was released this year, 2022. The 59-year-old Cruz must have been beaming at what a journey his career has been up to this point. 36 years ago, on May 16, 1986, the 24-year-old version of Tom Cruise was also experiencing his first blockbuster hit movie. Sure, he had already starred in some successful movies up to this point, but nothing like Top Gun. It would start a career unrivaled by many in Hollywood and cement Cruise as an undeniable movie star. What makes Tom Cruise so successful? In an industry that now favors the star power of its intellectual properties over the star power of its actors, why is Tom Cruise still so relevant? Well, sit back, relax, grab a pair of running shoes, and let's sprint for our lives as we look into the unparalleled career of Tom Cruise. Before we jump into the video, don't forget to pounce on the like and subscribe buttons along with the notification bell. It would really help support my channel, plus you'll know when one of my new videos drops. And now, back to the show. What is a movie star? It's more than just being a good actor. A movie star is someone whose body of work has earned the trust of the movie going public. Movie going is still alive. It's just not as widespread as it used to be. It feels like a decade ago, we'd have a blockbuster come out every week. It's more sparse now. With streaming, audiences have more choices than ever. However, Tom Cruise still brings audiences to the theaters. He pushes for the movie-going experience, having most recently demanded that his Top Gun sequel be released in theaters exclusively. And audiences showed up big time. If you told Tom Cruise in 1986 at the premiere of the original Top Gun that he would make a sequel 36 years later and it would be a gigantic hit, a hit during a time of never-ending superhero movies, streaming releases, and high inflation in a post-pandemic world, well, he'd probably look you in the eye, confused, wondering why you're spitting while you talk. But it's because you time-traveled to tell him this, so he should be more understanding. Every decade since the 80s, Tom Cruise has had at least a few hit movies come out. For context, let's quickly look at the movies from each decade that have enhanced his career. The Outsiders, Risky Business, Top Gun, The Color of Money, Born on the 4th of July, and Rain Man. Even the disappointing Days of Thunder still made some decent money. Then in the 90s, Tom released a consecutive run of domestic films that grossed over 100 million each, starting with A Few Good Men and ending with Jerry Maguire. But even the ones that don't light the box office on fire, like Magnolia or Eyes Wide Shut, they still have critical acclaim and evoke discussion to this day. When you head into the 2000s, it becomes a hybrid of the types of movies he's made before, that being blockbuster fare and the more dramatic character pieces. By May 23, 2005, the Oprah couch jumping event that shall not be named... Wait, I just named it. Well, whatever, who cares? That was a bit of a blow to his movie star Sheen. Not enough to derail the box office returns of Mission Impossible 3, but it did give the audience pause. That and the other stuff. This is the phase in his career where his appearance in a movie no longer guaranteed a blockbuster outcome. However, what's impressive is that he rarely has an outright flop. Sure, it's happened, and it was more likely to happen at this point in his career, with the added drama around him. But even his lower grossing movies still made their budget back, and many times doubling or tripling it. The one outright flop during this period, 2005 and beyond, was Rock of Ages. The budget was $75 million, the worldwide gross was $59.4 million. He was one of many headliners for that movie though, to be fair. Okay, enough about box office grosses. I only point them out to illustrate the business reasons that Tom Cruise is a movie star. The numbers don't lie. In an article written by Jeff Snyder of LA Magazine, he posed a question to some of Hollywood's top reporters and critics for their take on whether Tom Cruise is the biggest movie star in the world. Here are some very interesting answers to the question. Christian Harloff of The Big Thing on YouTube replied, Tom Cruise is one of the few performers today who generally thinks of the audience first, maybe even to his own detriment. But you can tell with everything he does in all of his films, there is a different kind of commitment he makes to the audience. For that reason and that reason alone, I believe that he holds the title of greatest movie star living right now. I agree, and I think this is one of Cruz's biggest assets. He knows the audience is the lifeblood of his career. 
he treats them with respect. I don't know if any of you have noticed, but it seems like modern movie studios have a deep disconnect with what the general public want to see on their screens. It's not that difficult. It's about being entertained, inspired, and being transported to a place of wonder. Hollywood's recent trend of baiting their audience with negative press in order to get hate views can't last. It's like burning a candle from both ends. They should take notes from crews about respecting the audience. Umberto Gonzalez of The Rap states, He is the biggest movie star because Top Gun Maverick made a bucket load of cash and he didn't have to don a cape or cowl to do so. Amen. Amen. The real movie stars of today are franchises and intellectual properties. I guess you could argue that there's no difference in what Cruz is doing because he's part of a couple of established franchises as well. However, if you were to recast his role of Maverick or Ethan Hunt, it wouldn't work. If you were to recast Thor, it would be jarring, but it could be accepted. After all, Thor is bigger than any one actor. Scott Feinberg of The Hollywood Reporter points out that he'll happily go around the world to sell a movie and he is the greatest asset a marketing and publicity team could have because you don't have to pull teeth to get him to do things. This is something I've noticed about Tom Cruise. He is the hardest working promoter of film out there. He travels from country to country, state to state, showing up in person to let audiences know that he's all in. He's there signing autographs, taking pictures, and making the crowd feel like they're seen. Once he lets them know that they're seen, the audience can feel more connected to him when watching him on the screen. Name one actor doing more for his promotional tour than him. Now there was a time when he and Will Smith were having a healthy competition during their separate promotional tours. Arnold Schwarzenegger once gave Will Smith some valuable career advice. He told him, you are not a movie star if your movies are only successful in America. You are not a movie star until every person in every country on earth knows who you are. You have to travel the globe, shake every hand, kiss every baby. Think of yourself as a politician running for the biggest movie star in the world. In Will Smith's memoirs, he wrote, I started to notice how much other actors hate traveling, press, and promoting. It seemed like utter insanity to me. I would scan the field of my competition to see who else knew, who else held the secret. He realized Tom Cruise was the head of the pack. I started quietly monitoring all of Tom's global promotional activities. When I arrived in a country to promote my movie, I would ask the local movie executives to give me Tom's promotional schedule, and I vowed to do two more hours than whatever he did in every country. Unfortunately, Tom Cruise is either a cyborg, or there are six of him. Drew McWheeney of Formerly Dangerous writes, When he was younger, Cruise built his career by trusting himself and his image to the very best directors he could find slowly refining a certain kind of alpha masculine ideal. What makes his late era stardom more remarkable is how he only transitioned into action movies once he was in his 40s, and he's pushed himself harder than arguably any action star of any age in the last few decades. When you see a Tom Cruise film and you see an insane stunt, part of the kick is knowing that's really him and that he's entering his fourth decade of being an icon. This brings me to the phase of Tom Cruise's career that we've been in since 2011, the Mission Impossible phase. It's a franchise that he's nurtured since before the first movie debuted in 1996. It was also the first movie that he wore the hat of producer on. In fact, it started his partnership with producer Paula Wagner. You see, one of the reasons Tom Cruise can craft his career so specifically is that he and Paula Wagner formed the production company Cruise Wagner in July of 1992. From here on out, Cruz would have a very hands-on relationship with all of his movies. It means that the career he's forged from this point on is very much a result of his own decisions. Not many actors have that kind of control of their career. Many times audiences assume that an actor has full autonomy of the roles they get. It's just not true. So love him or hate him, you gotta respect his full-on commitment to his craft and his ability to produce his own films. I mean, who else is doing death-defying stunts on real sets with real danger and real in-camera production value? No one. In fact, it can be somewhat compared to the feeling Jackie Chan evokes with his films. The pure spectacle of watching these performers risk their lives to put something truly special on screen. Now that's worth your money to see it in theaters. At times, the responsibility on his shoulders can get very intense. His emotional rant on the set of Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning reached a boil when some crew members weren't fully complying with the current pandemic protocols. 
He was recorded going on a rant about how this puts people's careers in jeopardy, how it puts the film in jeopardy. Yeah, he was pissed, but I get it. The crew members not following the protocol only have their job at risk. Tom Cruise has the entire film on his shoulders. The movie had already been delayed twice at this point as well. Some people criticize him for the way he handled it, but you try being responsible for a movie franchise that's worth billions of dollars and hangs hundreds of people's health and jobs in the balance. Might be hard. Tom Cruise is also heavily involved with choosing his directors. He struck up a very solid creative relationship with Christopher McQuarrie, the director of Mission Impossible 5 through 8. He's also worked with Joseph Kosinski on both Oblivion and Top Gun Maverick. It seems like it's all about the on-set camaraderie and passion. If you're going to be a director working on one of Tom Cruise's sets, you better not be squeamish. On Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, Skydance production CCO Dana Goldberg Ellison admitted, On Ghost Protocol, we wanted to hang Tom off the side of a building, and we actually couldn't get insurance. And Tom wanted to fire the insurance company. And we did. And we got somebody else to insure the movie. See, you literally can't stop Cruz from doing his own stunts. And who really wants him to? It's a thrill seeing what he cooks up. In fact, he's heading to space for his next movie after Mission Impossible 8, yeah, because of course he is. It's currently referred to as the untitled Tom Cruise SpaceX project. The synopsis reads, Tom Cruise and director Doug Liman travel far beyond Earth to film the first ever Hollywood motion picture in outer space. Holy crap, that's gonna be, that's gonna be something else. This will be another reunion with director Doug Liman, who previously helmed Edge of Tomorrow and American Made. By the way, this video isn't sponsored by Tom Cruise or anything. I just respect what he brings to every movie he makes. It's a rare quality in today's era of entertainment. The dude works hard. I hope he gets to put his feet up on the couch and watch trash TV every once in a while. But I wouldn't count on it.